Isotretinoin, also known as Accutane, often gets a bad rap as being something that's really hard to take. Well, I'm here to tell you it 100% does not need to be this way. For those who are new to the channel, I'm Dr. John Barbieri. I'm a board certified dermatologist and acne expert. In this video, we're gonna discuss the most common side effects of isotretinoin and how we can prevent them. Before we start, I wanna make it clear that isotretinoin is not the right treatment for everyone. Although it can deliver incredible results, with most patients who complete a five to eight month course of treatment having a durable, remission, lasting clearance of their acne, isotretinoin does come with some serious side effects as well. It's important to discuss with your dermatologist whether isotretinoin might be the right treatment for you. However, isotretinoin has a notorious reputation for side effects, which is often worse than the reality. In this video, I wanna review the most common side effects of isotretinoin and share some of my tricks for how to prevent these so that we can get the most out of this incredibly effective medicine when it comes to treating acne. The number one issue I see when it comes to isotretinoin side effects is taking too high of a dose. Almost every side effect of isotretinoin, whether it be dry skin or joint pains, is much more common with higher doses than lower doses. And when we look at the data and head-to-head -head studies, lower dose regimens have lower rates of side effects, but they have similar rates of clearance, similar rates of long-term control, and higher patient satisfaction. And so when we think about using isotretinoin or treating acne, we don't need to go with really high doses that come with a lot of side effects we can use lower dose regimens to help make the course of isotretinoin easier and prevent and minimize these side effects. However, even with lower dosages, dryness is a common issue. Almost everybody gets dry lips and some people will get dry eyes or dry skin as well. Fortunately, we have a bunch of tricks that we can use to help minimize dryness. The first is taking omega-3 supplement. There are multiple randomized trials that show that taking about a gram a day of omega-3s can reduce dryness from isotretinoin by about half. So this is a simple thing that we can do to try to reduce dryness, the most common side effect that we see with isotretinoin. In addition, frequent use of moisturizers like Vaseline or Aquaphor can help with lip dryness. Using eye drops like Refresh or Sustain can help with eye dryness. And using nasal saline mist can help with nosebleeds or nose dryness. Before we discuss how to prevent purging from isotretinoin, if you found this video helpful so far, pop that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It really means a lot to me, and it helps me bring the highest quality videos to the community. Another feared side effect with isotretinoin is having a flare when starting the medication, sometimes also called purging. Here again, we have a nice simple trick that can reduce the rate of this initial flaring from 30% all the way down to 5% or less. There are multiple clinical trials that have found that taking a non-sedating antihistamine like Zyrtec or Claritin can help prevent this flaring, speed improvement of acne, and also improve overall satisfaction. In my practice, I'll typically use loratadine, which is Claritin, 10 milligrams a day. As it's a bit less sedating, it doesn't make people as drowsy as other antihistamines like Zyrtec or Cetirizine. In my experience, the best way to address joint pains or muscle aches is just to use a lower dose of isotretinoin. Although it can take longer to get to clear skin and a remission of acne, there's almost always a dose that will work where you can avoid things like joint pains or muscle aches. Isotretinoin can also cause sun sensitivity. It will sunburn easier on this medication. So it's important to use sun protection, whether that be clothing, sunscreen, or just avoiding the midday sun when the UV is the highest. Another issue that commonly comes up with respect to isotretinoin is the need for frequent lab monitoring or blood work. Historically, patients have often had blood work checked monthly while they're on isotretinoin. However, the more we've looked into the data, the more we studied the value of this blood work, the more we found that it's probably not necessary. Current consensus suggests that for otherwise healthy patients, checking blood work before you start the medication and at the highest dose is all that's required for the vast majority of patients. In addition, there are some who suggested given the low evidence for the value of lab testing with isotretinoin that we shouldn't check blood work at all. An important consideration with isotretinoin is the potential for mood changes. Isotretinoin can absolutely cause mood issues such as depression, irritability, or mood swings. However, when we look at the data about isotretinoin on a population level, it's such a good treatment for acne and treating acne is associated with improvement in mood that when we look on that, when we compare isotretinoin to other treatments for acne, we find that isotretinoin is associated with lower risk for depression, lower risk for being on an antidepressant, and lower risk for suicide. Now that doesn't mean we don't have to be vigilant about watching out 
for those rare individuals who do develop mood changes due to isotretinoin. But when we're deciding whether this is a good treatment to use or not, compared to other options that we have for acne, it seems like isotretinoin is a safe treatment at a population level when we're thinking about mood changes. There have also been concerns about whether isotretinoin might be associated with risk of inflammatory bowel disease, a gut health issue. When we study this again, the data really doesn't seem to support that isotretinoin is associated with a meaningful risk of inflammatory bowel disease. In fact, other treatments we use for acne commonly, like oral antibiotics, are well known to be associated with inflammatory bowel disease. So when it comes to being on something like isotretinoin or being on something like chronic oral antibiotics, it seems like isotretinoin is probably a safer option when it comes to risk of inflammatory bowel disease. So to put it all together, while isotretinoin is not right for everyone, it does not need to be a hard medication to take. Using a lower dose, using omega-3s to help with dryness, using antihistamines to help prevent initial flaring can all help to minimize some of the most common side effects with isotretinoin. In addition, recent evidence suggests that frequent lab monitoring and blood work is not necessary for most patients who are being treated with isotretinoin. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please consider giving a like and subscribing to the channel so we can share this more with the community. In addition, leave a comment below to share your experience with isotretinoin and to ask me your questions about acne. See ya!